on Peach and Shiro versus Day after, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Nick Taylor, is it? Or no. Welcome to Glad Rap. We're here at Peach Boxing Gym here in West Auckland. And today I've got my guest, Andre Renegade Mikhailovich. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How have you been? How's your day been? Oh, it's been good. Uh, I like a nice bit of rain. Um, nice to be here with uh, David Light uh, hitting some pads in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now he's getting ready for his fight. Same night as I'm fighting as well, so it'll be good. It's good. It's very good, actually. So, um... Let's talk about the big fight you just recently had uh, against uh, Gunnar Jackson. Um, it was obviously a really good fight. Before we talk about the fight itself, let's talk about uh, your prep work that you had. Um, your prep work that you had uh, preparing for the fight. Because um, you kind of like, uh, went, you're very focused on uh, getting this fight ready for yourself. So you, you didn't have a lot of interviews with other people. It was just you and Isaac and the team like setting things up. Um. Well, I think of this fight, with it being my first time being a 10-rounder, my first actual title fight and stuff like that, it was a big moment for me. And, you know, this fight hasn't been a 10-week training camp. It's been a six-year training camp, you know. This has been from the first day. I walked into a boxing gym at um, Earl Loper Tires uh, out in West Auckland, like near Pals Park. And I walked in. I remember I was doing some, like, hill sprints with this kid on my first day. And he goes, oh, why are you doing boxing to get fit? And I was like, oh, to be the best. And, um... I think that just kind of sums it up really, it's like, I think for the last six years all I've wanted to do is prove myself to everybody, and prove myself to myself and it's taken a long time and now I finally won the New Zealand title, it really, you know, it's overwhelming and when I got announced the winner I cried my eyes out because as an amateur I never won any like major titles like nationals or anything and stuff like that and I wasn't a very good amateur, I, was, I did it right as an amateur but I wasn't actually that good and I never got to really like show my talent and stuff like that so to actually win a title against someone like respectful like Gunnar like Fuck it meant everything to me. It meant like the world to me. And you know, like I said, it's a six week it was a six year training camp, you know. But all the finer details came in the last like I think it was like ten to eight weeks where we really focused on, you know, fighting a ten round fight and, you know, being a professional fighter. That that's what it was. It wasn't I was going away from the am amateurish like throw heaps of punches, you know, it was this time stick to the game plan and be a professional, you know. I think that's what yeah, like that sums it up, be a professional and act like a professional. So. And it it was certainly, um, it was definitely a different fight from your other fights because not only did we see uh, a lot of improvement from yourself, but we could also see, hello, <laughs> we could only see, um, we could also see like the maturity of yourself, the composure you saw throughout the fight, um, and just a lot of uh, good hard work that uh, that was worked with you, uh, with, with yourself uh, as a professional and Isaac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, well I knew going into this fight, the, I, the whole thing was for me to focus, you know? Just focus and stay committed to the goal of like winning each round as it comes and not worrying like, ah, oh, I've done two rounds, oh, i got eight left. It was just, just be consistent and just do what you got to do to win. And, you know, we followed the game plan, which was obviously to use my, my, my born given advantages, which I have over a few fighters, as my, like, my reach and my speed and stuff like that. And it came through. It was surprising fighting Gunnar. Like, obviously, I knew he'd been around a long time very experienced you know hats off to him and like a massive like congratul congratulations on his career and that you know and he's, he's a real down to earth guy and a real nice guy and like, I, I, I actually really like him a lot and you know we, we talked after the fight and he's just he's just nice but um, it was surprising in the first round I remember when I hopped in and usually the first thing that usually works for me is my jab and I remember my jab was like falling short and I was like what the fuck is happening here man what the fuck <laughs> But then I was like, oh, he's pretty experienced, so I might as well start fainting and, like, you know, start really thinking about what I was doing. Um, yeah, I, I tried and I did that, and it all started to, like, um, started to go from there. But which was funny, what was funny for me was people was like, ah, oh, take him to deep waters, take him to deep waters, he'll drown and all this shit. But, like, I don't know, I felt like I swam pretty good. Oh, well, you're certainly um, an amazing swimmer from that, from what I saw. <laughs> oh, at least you didn't drown. Um, well, no, you did amazingly. You could probably do laps around them. But no, um, what I did notice throughout the fight was 
he was smiling throughout the fight as well um, and almost kind of like egging you on and there was a, a lot of talking in the ring uh, can you say what what was being said uh, I, I don't know bro you're, you're, the adrenaline's pumping that much I don't even really remember walking out of the ring let alone what I, let alone what I was saying and stuff like that you know like that's just standard like fight talk like oh come on hit me then oh you're not hitting hard enough all that it's just that stuff nothing nothing too serious you know it's just fun I just, I just viewed it as fun and when he was talking to me I knew that if this is your whole plan is to talk to me and try and wind me up and to run out of energy you better have some better tricks up your sleeve because like this is this is not going to be it you know and just, that's why I had my chin right there and I was just looking at his chest it's just keeping it unemotional and being a professional you know like you have you have a professional painter, you know? If he got shitty every time a, a drop of paint dropped on the floor, he wouldn't be a professional, you know? If you had a taxi driver that every time somebody cut him off, he wouldn't be a professional taxi driver. I was just being a professional boxer and just saying, true to being a professional. That's the whole thing was just be a professional, act accordingly, act like a champion. And now, now I am the New Zealand champion. It, it's nice. And finally it paid off. I'm, what, 10 0 now? NZ champ. The champ, so it's nice. And I wouldn't have won for anybody else for the New Zealand title either. Like, you know, you got other people floating around, but he was a, like, it was meant to be that we and him were to fight on that day. And to be honest, if I, if I had fought him in March, and if he hadn't pulled out, I probably would, it probably would have been a, it would probably would have been a lot closer fight, you know? Because in March, I wasn't ready. Like, I actually wasn't even, like, I fought like shit in March, March against uh, Omar. I still won, and still won every round in that, but like, I just performed like shit. And like, if I had fought Gunner that night, I probably, would, probably wouldn't have gone my way that well. I must still may have won, but it was just meant to be that I was supposed to fight him down at a beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful event put on like Nigel and stuff like that. And, that was good. It was a good event, and like it was nice. It was a lovely venue, bro. Like during the day, with that venue looking over the water, it was pretty fantastic, to be honest. So. Yeah, I mean, like the, that that venue is like one of those things that uh, you'd definitely want to uh, propose or something like that to someone. Um, but yeah, yeah, propose. Um, but like um, as, as like you said, it you did a. Uh, he did a good job, like keep, keeping your composure throughout the whole fight, especially because he was uh, doing that um, that dirty talk throughout the fight, and um, the whole hype around Gunner, his experience, it didn't get to you as well, and it, this really showed um, you've grown for it as a boxer. Nah, because you know, the the thing is, is like. A fight is just a fight. It's really not that hard to be a fighter, okay? It's just throwing punches. You deal with harder things in life, you know? You deal with people dying, you know? You deal with losses. You deal with, like, getting fired from your job or having to, like, move move jobs and stuff like that. You deal with people in your family being sick and out and stuff like that, and you got to deal with that. You deal with money issues. You deal with, you know, I'm not just speaking for myself. You know, you could have a, a single mother with three children has it harder than me. And that's all I think about is, like, for me, this is not hard. This is this is just a job for me, you know. And I don't get too emotionally involved with it. It is business for me. Nothing will ever compare to like the punches that life will throw at you. A fight for me is easy and it's fun. That's what I love to do. Is I'm a fighter. I wouldn't be a fighter if like little things like oh, his experience, oh he's this and he's that. If I let little, little things like that to me get to me, then what would be the point of being a boxer? The whole point is to challenge yourself. The whole point is to climb up Mount Everest. You know, if I got like a quarter of the way up Mount Everest and you know what, this is too hard. What the fuck would be the point? I would never. Sir Edmund Hillary would never have been him. You know. You know the Wright brothers would have never thrown an airplane if their plane never got off the ground. You know. You wouldn't have the Four, seven. You wouldn't have Concord, but you know I feel like I'm the Concord of this generation. I'm gonna fly higher and faster than everybody else. <laughs> well, I guess it's kind of like as things happen. It was good that the things that as you have it, as as you said before, you felt you weren't 100% ready for that March fight, and as it, he obviously didn't felt ready because obviously he pulled out like this couple of day um, couple of weeks before, uh, and you end up fighting the guy that actually uh, did a pretty good job considering that was his first pro fight as well. Uh, I've got no comment on him. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, but uh, the, reason I, the reason I got no comment is like you can't fake boxing. Okay, that's all. That's all I'm gonna. That's all I'm gonna say. Is you can't fake that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you, you um. You can't fake it. You know, like as an amateur, maybe in ways I was faking it. Like I was trying to be something I'm not. But when I turned pro, I was like, I need to be genuine. And I need to be myself. People may not like it. People may like it. And I'm being me thus far, and it's worked. But with that Omar fella, man, like, oh. <laughs> uh, he wound me up a little bit. And I think that's probably why I fought like shit, because, like, that was the first and last time someone's ever wound me up. And it wasn't that he wound me up. I was absolutely fine with, like, whatever he was doing and shit. But, like, I was just in there just wanting to knock him out. And that's the first time I've actually really wanted to hurt somebody. But usually I just want to fight, and I enjoy fighting. But You know, I've actually almost forgotten about the fact that um, 
he was he was trying to egg you out uh, during the weigh-in as well and uh, during the fight. I, I actually have forgotten about that. He was faking it. I knew he was faking it. That was not who he was. Because when he walked in the door and I looked at him, he just had this nice chill ass attitude. And then as soon as he saw me, he started going like that. And I was like, okay, that's the first time he did that. Second time was when we were at the venue that night. Walking with a chill ass attitude, he sees me, he starts puffing his chest out and that. And I was like, this is not you, bro. That's not who you are as a person. You're not that person. And that's what happened was he just broke down in front of me. It was like a car breaking down. The wheels started to fall off. All of that. But, you know, I don't know what he's up to these days. Like, if he wants to continue his career, good luck to him. Just, ha- just yeah, just good luck to him. Good luck to you. Yeah. It was a... Pr- um it actually just proved that he actually did pretty good well uh, against you as a, a very experienced uh, professional. So it's, we have to give him a lot of uh, credit for uh, taking the fight on short notice, a lot of, um, especially how well he did. Um, yeah. So what did you do between for training camp between um, March and uh, this fight? Um, I fought, when did I fight? I fought Chase Haley. Oh, yeah. That was a good fight. Probably best fight today in terms of like um, excitement and stuff like that. And I like Chase. Like me and Chase had a really good conversation after the fight, and he's cool, like a good guy. And he, me, for me and him, that fight was just business. Like me and him just wanted to fight, and we both wanted to win. Yeah. Um, but leading up to this fight, like you know, it was I wasn't so much. Um, it wasn't so much. It wasn't so much like sh- get going. It wasn't so much like short bursts. It was just long, continuous stuff. Like going for real long runs in the morning and stuff like that just like focusing for you know more than you need to and that was it really just focusing and just relaxing and being patient and it was funny yeah, my, uh, throughout the fight I remember feeling really patient on that and I learned that patience off my girlfriend because fuck <laughs> test me bro <laughs> nah she's not yeah a lot of mental patience yeah a lot of mental patience you know and that fight with Chase was a was a hell of a cracker fight um, I, uh, I love it was on Sky TV as well um, I think it was uh uh, Isaac's first um, Sky TV show, and um, it ended up going the, sis- the distance. And you were fighting on a heavier weight class than you usually do a- again. Uh, what was like uh, fighting Chase? Oh, he was he was good man. It's really good. He um was l- bigger than me, heavier than me, all of it. And um, it's funny when I saw him from the from the weigh-in and then to the fight. I remember him looking a little bit bigger than that. But I knew that like uh, to fight a bigger guy, you can't let him bully you. So that's why I went out and I just tried to get on the inside straight away and try and get my punches off, and I did, and it just went to my favour. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it was just a good fight, and you know, a lot of respect to Chase. He'll go on to do great things in the super middleweight division. I'll go on to do things in the middleweight division, and potentially super welterweight division. I think that's uh, probably the best division for me, is super welterweight, because like I'm not a, I'm not a very big guy. Like, I'm tall on that, but I'm not a very like thick set person. So to get down to super welterweight probably be my probably be my probably be my like best bet in the long run but right now the middleweight is what's available in New Zealand and that so I think when we start going over to Australia and that me and Isaac have discussed it quite a bit it's super welterweight and some good fights in Australia eventually and we'll just go from there because you know like the whole the whole thing for me now is not to prove myself to improve myself and there's a lot of flaws in me and I can see it and I watched the fight back and I was like you know like you, uh, you know you there's a few things there that I need to really work on and yeah just uh, yeah just just gotta work on stuff but if you don't need to work on stuff then what would be the point like all of us gotta work on stuff whether it be like your attitude towards life whether your driving skills singing skills you know my singing skills need improvement as well but you know, that's what it is so um, cutting down that weight because you're pretty skinny as it is um, <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or not but yeah you're pretty skinny as it is uh, would that mean like um, changing something up changing your diet obviously maybe going to see a nutritionist and stuff like that um uh, yeah like I'm, I'm, I am, when I fight, I am quite skinny because I've like, lost quite a bit of weight. But if you see me during camp, I'm actually like, I'm not like that skinny during camp. It's only on the last week or so I get like, when you lost like a couple of kilos and that. Yeah, yeah. Um, before my fight with Chase, it was interesting. I was, I, in camp, I was only 71 kilos. When, when I first turned pro, I was 78 kilos. So I, I, I think maybe it was because I've lost a little bit of body fat and more like lean muscle and stuff like that. But I was a lot skinnier between that Chase fight. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't like, I don't like that I was so light during camp. So for this camp, I was eating a lot more, and I was weighing maybe about 75, 76 for the majority of camp. But um, I'm good with my weight. I can I can lose weight, weight weight really well. Like making weight for me has never ever been an issue, ever been an issue. Even as an amateur, when I was making 69, so to make 69 nine, uh, there might be a need to be a few changes. But I don't. It'd be more. 
the weeks leading up to the fight, the last three weeks, I'll just diet a bit better. Like, I already diet while it is, but my portions will be slightly less. But he's still going to maintain enough where you're, like, you got the energy for, like, being a boxer. Oi, hey, Rocco! Man, come on. Um, you, you still got to have enough energy to be a boxer and be working. Because you got to remember that I work 40 hours a week, and then i got to train. So I have to have enough energy to sustain my working life and then my boxing life. There's two different lives to it, two different sides of the story. But, you know, it's all... It's sort of just practice and learning, and like I'm only a baby. Like I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning as it is, and I'm learning about my body. But I think I did go and see a nutritionist for this camp, but I, I don't really know if it was for me to be completely honest. Just because like it's real like micro managing what you eat, and I like to eat. If I feel hungry, I'll eat. If I'm not hungry, I won't eat. You know. And if you have to lose weight, you just be sensible what you're eating. You'll eat probably more protein than you are carbs, but you still need to have enough carbs to maintain the energy for the day. It's just a bit of a balancing act, but. Yeah, definitely common sense. Like, my whole thing is, like, if it looks shit, don't eat it. If it looks good, eat it. Like, obviously, you wouldn't see me eating Maccas, like, for four or five and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm human as well. I like to have the occasional meal out and about with my missus and that and my friends and that. So, I'm just a, I'm just a human. I like have my flaws, but it's all right. It's all right. I think overall, I'm getting much better at being a professional. And it's funny because my, um, my best mate said, said, you can be a professional boxer, but that doesn't mean you're a professional. And I was like... What the fuck do you mean? It still means I'm a professional boxer. He's like, no, no. There's a difference between a, being a professional and a professional boxer. And I'm starting to understand to be a professional. It's not just when you're in the gym. It's all the time. It's the way you act. The way you talk to people. And it's kind of like you've always got that hat of you uh, on top of you. Because like sometimes you got to take that Andre Mikhailovich hat off and just be Andre, like the fucking the 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 son or the father to be or the best mate or like you know. It's just you know. But being a professional, you know. Uh, it's taken me a long time to realize that and there has been aspects of my like life I've had to improve and like you know not not going out and stuff like that because I want to be a champ and I want to be the best and I, w- I firmly believe I will be the best eventually it'll take time but I'll get there and there's not a doubt in my eye there's genuinely no doubt you know I look at the top 10 in the world and I'm like I'm pretty sure I've hopped in there I may not win but I could definitely mix it 100% believe that in my heart but you'll see in the next years to come how, how good I'll be and I'm, and I'm out, to, out here to prove how great I can be you know and like all of these little all these fights that I've had leading up it's just yeah it's just all a part of the story and I really appreciate everyone I fought you know it's just been it's been a hell of a ride this fight and I just want to keep it going it's been fantastic going back to the gunner fight because it's probably the biggest fight of your career um uh, uh, Adrian Tahir was Is that Adrian Tahir think about this on Adrian the Adrian Tahir fight, that was on the Joseph Park undercard in a massive arena on my 21st birthday. But you can't beat that. 100% you can't beat that. That is. That's actually pretty true. Okay, one of the, not the big, biggest, but one of the biggest fights of your career. I, th- I think my most favourite night in terms of being a professional was my pro debut. Because that's when I was like, oh, I was born. Like, I just came out of my mother's womb. I was like, oh, we're out here now. And then you've seen me being like a toddler and then like a seven and eight year old. You've just seen me grow up a bit. Like if you, the person you would have interviewed a year ago from today is a different person because I'm getting older and I'm starting to mature. And like when you first met me, I was living in my mum and dad's like basement. Now I've got my own flat with my girlfriend. You know, the car I drive is different. Like the workplace is different, you know. I'm starting to get older and I'm, you know, saving money now. I'm not just going out spending willy nilly and stuff like that. You know, being smarter. I got a financial advisor and stuff like that now. All that kind of stuff. It's just just part of being an adult that's what I'm becoming I think people forget that sometimes that bro you give a 21 year old a mic who's just been hyped up or is excited because he's on um, on in front of a camera such a it takes time bro and it takes time to be mature and I'm getting there slowly bro. I'm 100% getting there slowly and a lot of it's been, a lot of it has just been work with Isaac and just being around him and seeing what he does and he's been the best thing for me in terms of my career bro. and Boaz of course oh, yeah I was going to say that the dynamic in this gym I know it's a little bit cliche that say it's called a family but I kind of I can see that um, that you're a pretty close crowd um, it's kind of it almost looks like he was a father figure to you um, as well. Would you say that? Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, maybe not. He's not old enough to be my father. No. Big brother, maybe. No, he's someone I look to, not just for boxing. It's for life. You know, I, he was the first person I told when I found out my girlfriend was pregnant. So that's how much it means to me. First person I told. You know, and that's before everybody. My best mates, my mum, my dad, and all of it. And you know, he's just been there a hundred percent to support me. Like, you know, there's not a, there's probably not a. Not a day goes by where I don't get a phone call or a text from him, just like checking up on how I am or what's happening or what we're doing in that. Like you know, both both the Peach Brothers and Alina like just look after, look up. Don't 
not necessarily look after me, but just are there for me, support me. And everybody in this room, like, it's not... Renegade, when I say renegade, it doesn't just represent myself. I represent everybody who's fighting for something in their life, you know. I'm, I'm out here for the people that started like their first business, that have just come out of high school and need to do something with their lives or feel like they want to do something with their lives. I'm fighting for us all, man. And I think the moment people realize that it's not, and I know it myself, it's not just about me, but people, I think people, I think when I get a bit older and I've been around a bit longer, people understand that like this is a, this is for everybody. This, this is for all the like people that are struggling in life, you know. Because I've come from like, I came from like a shit fucking like, sh yeah, I've come from the shit bro and I'm, I'm coming along slowly and no I'm not the be all and end all but I sure as hell believe that one day I'll be able to get to the top and stuff like that. Like, ultimate goal is to sell out Eden Park in a big title fight, unification fight and stuff like that. It's the ultimate goal, you know, but we'll get there eventually. I think right now it's time for me to like not talk as much and just fight and be a fighter and um, you know, make, make that money and win those titles. That's like the, that's the thing to do, you know. You know, that, that saying that um, empty cart makes the loudest noise. So. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to... You want to be um, mature and stuff, but you still want to talk yourself up at the same time. Because it's kind of like... You don't need to. Like, you don't need I, no, no, no. I took myself up in here, in my heart, in my soul. That's where the fire burns. It doesn't burn out there in a the field. It burns in here. And if it burns in here, that's all I need. I don't need other people to glorify me or for me to glorify myself. I'm doing all my actions with this hand, you know? This is the judge, jury, and executioner. Everything else is in here. It certainly does bring a little bit of entertainment into the fact that we're yeah, doing it. Does, but my, my punches and my footwork, they all speak for themselves. They speak for myself. Yeah. You know, yeah, I smile on that and I talk, but like, let my hands do the talking and, no, let my, yeah, let my hands do the talking and my feet do the walking, my mouth can remain shut. Like, I don't need to talk anymore. Like, what have I got left to say? Like, oh, he's a bitch, he's a bitch. But anyone can say that to me. Anybody can say that. It's, it's old, bro. Yeah. It's old. I'd rather talk about like well-being and like you know looking after one of each other and stuff like that. It sounds a bit Muhammad Ali-ish, but it's true. Like, I'm sick of like fucking Titus talking shit about each other. Why don't you just want to bring up your community in that? You know, why wouldn't you go back to your high school and like tell them that like, if you want something like you can go get it? That's more important to me than being all about me. Ah, oh, I'm Andre Michaela, the I'm this and I'm that. It's not. A, it's not just about me. It's about everybody. I think you've also reached the point that you don't need to talk about yourself as well because you have proven. Uh, you've you've said what. I've proved something, but I haven't proved fuck all. Like, if you look at like a pie chart, I've proved like, like a tiny wee bit. I've proved like nothing. I've still got so much more to do. And I think in the years to come, what? In the years to come, you'll really start to see it all like fall into place. Right now, I'm still that baby, you know? Yeah. But you've proved to the New Zealand scene, at least, uh, who you are. What is New Zealand? Like, what is New Zealand? There's bigger fish to fry. There's bigger... I'm just a big fish in a small pond. 100% big fish small pond I want to be the smallest fish in the biggest pond and climb my way up and that's what the plan is that's why I'm here that's why I got my wraps on that's why I got my boots on I'm here to be a fighter on the international scene I always said I always said New Zealand was just a stepping stone and it is like unfortunately I will probably never defend the spell ever again I will never will because I'll be going off to Australia I want to win the Oceania title I want to win the world title that's, that's more important than to me that's where it's at that's what we got to do and I got heaps of time under my belt and I will do it 100% a hundred percent, no doubt. So, um, uh, after the Gunnar Jackson fight, it was quite an emotional uh, time after that. Uh, not only um, um, with Gunnar announcing his retirement, um, also uh, giving a lot of credit to Gunnar, saying that you uh, he was uh, you looked up to up to him as well. Yeah, hundred percent looked up to him. He's like he's a pioneer for New Zealand boxing. You know, he actually is. Like. He was top 10 in the world with the WBO, you know, he's fought like Anthony Mundine, he's been over and fought in Vegas and stuff like that. You know, he's been, he's been around a long time and you have to respect that. There is no way I can't respect that, there's no way I can shoot him down. Like bro, he's Gunnar Jackson, Gunnar the son of Jackson. Everybody in New Zealand boxing knows who he is, man. And it really is an honour to fight him in his last fight, you know. It may have not been gone his way, but he fought valiantly and he never gave up, he never got stopped. He fought his ass off and he tried his best and I tried my best. It's just how, uh, how it was. I can't say anything bad about him. He's a family man. He's got uh, children in there. He's got a wife in there. He's a family man. And I'm a family man. I'll be a family man soon. So I can only just respect that, you know. And with everything leading up to it, I actually didn't even think I've talked any shit. I may have once or twice, but like, honestly, like, don't take it to heart, people. Like, it's, it doesn't mean, it's just me talking. Like, doesn't, don't take it to heart. It's just, a, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's not, don't take anything seriously. Only take seriously my fighting. That's when everything happens. Yeah, yeah, that's when it happens. So, as you said before, you're about to become a father. Do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Yeah, a little boy. 
Yeah, we had like a baby reveal like uh, when she was 21 weeks, 35 weeks tomorrow. I'm a beautiful girl for him. Um, oh, I can't wait. I think that's going to be a massive challenge. But I'm something I'm looking forward to. Everybody's been like, oh, be prepared for being tired. But I'm already tired as it is. <laughs> you can't get much more tired than this, man. <laughs> wait and see. Um, do, do you have a baby name set or just go and wait until what, what, till the baby come out? Says? Yeah, now we've got a name. It's t- uh, Tarantino Marcellus is his first and last name. Tarantino Marcellus. Tarantino from Quentin Tarantino and Marcellus because Marcellus my dad's uh, my dad's name. Uh, Dries, uh, last name's undecided because like yeah, I don't want to. Uh, it's probably yeah, it's probably gonna be my like true real name, but we'll, yeah. we'll go from there. We'll see. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, it's up to me, and my girlfriend. That's our decision. Yeah. And when he's born, like we'll just decide then. It's not really not really a big deal. I think the main thing is for when baby's born. That's so, like, I just want baby to be healthy and happy and. When he comes out and he's smiling and like he's already throwing punches, we um did a 40 scan and he was going like this, like, <laughs> and I was like, first round to you, brother. <laughs> when he was kicking, he wasn't kicking; he was punching. Nah, nah, he was nah, nah. Power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's got his father's power, 100. percent Hopefully, I my my goal is for him to be better than me, and it, I don't really want him to box. I want him to be like like just fucking. I just want him to do something amazing with his life and out outshine me in every way. And if he can do that, I'd be so happy. That would be so so happy. Let's uh, talk about your ne- uh, next fight. So you're going to fight on August 31st at ABA Stadium on uh, Isaac Peach's uh, next show. Um, and your next opponent has been confirmed. Yeah, fighting Nick Taylor, kickboxer. Um, but that's, that's, uh, that's all I really know. <laughs> I believe he's had like over... Uh, is it e- I, was, I was either told over 20 fights or over 60 fights, which is actually a dramatic difference if you compare the two. Um, but he's a very experienced kickboxer. He's fought for a, a kickboxing world title before. And I believe he's six foot three as well. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Chestnut checkers. <laughs> <laughs> You're in my domain now. The lion's in. Nah, nah, good luck to him. Honestly, good luck to him. I hope he's training hard. I'm sure he is. Yeah. Hey, um, at the same gym at um, Chase, so I'm sure Chase will try and say, "Oh, Andre does this and that." But um, you know, I'm a southpaw at heart, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting fight. Um, you know, it's going to be. It's, it's probably the, it is the tallest box you've ever fought before. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Height, height doesn't mean shit. I don't want. Don't worry about height, because like at the end of the day, like there's more variables to fucking boxing than just height. You got so many different like. So many different uh, players on uh, so many different pieces on the um, chessboard. So height's just one of them, man. It'll be fine. And I'm not a midget either. I'm six foot, so like he'd be a little bit taller than me. No, I'm 182. I'm five eleven. <laughs> I say six foot to everybody. Though. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, you, I think you're like you're just slightly taller than me. Then <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm about five eleven. Uh, probably the same height then. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 182. So. I'm like one centimetre off fucking six foot, which is bullshit. Like whatever, whatever. I think like I'm 179, so uh, <laughs> we've gone into the moment where we talk, talk about each other's height. So, okay, so as we conclude the interview and... Uh, train, man, come on, I wanted to train. But no, nah, it's good, it's good to see Josh. I haven't seen Josh in ages, so it's nice to see you. What is your... Um, <laughs> uh, okay, a couple of questions and then we're done. All right, um, what is your message for... Um, <laughs> Careful, <laughs> Isaac <laughs> might be enjoying this. Um, what is your message for all your fans and um, all your supporters and fans? I don't have many fans. I got supporters. I don't have fans. I got supporters and people that support my journey. And that's what it is. Don't ever call people fans. I think that's like derogatory. Like not derogatory, but like they're supporters. Everybody that supports me, I appreciate. Um, if it wasn't for like the lessons that I learned throughout life, I wouldn't be where I am today. And just keep it up, man. Like, all of us just keep it up. Just keep going, keep trucking along, and believe in yourself. That's the biggest thing I've learned in life is just back yourself to the day of life. All right, and last thing, what is your message from Nick Taylor? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> That's Andre Mikhailovich, the New Zealand middleweight champion.